and they believe that Hillary Clinton has not done enough to engage, to reach out to progressive voters. But the one thing that did not come up was Hillary Clinton's emails and the FBI investigation. Today, the FBI wrapped up that investigation and they said they're not recommending any charges against her. They're still in shock about this. They're still trying to process yet another tragedy in their hometown. And even the hashtags that we've seen all week, like Dems in Philly or RNC in Cleve, those were engaging people who were at home and able to be a part of the conversation happening at the convention. The Cleveland Police Union is urging the Ohio Governor John Kasich to restrict the state's open carry gun laws for this convention. This morning, I talked with Cleveland Police Chief Calvin Williams, and he said he didn't set any expectations for how many arrests there would be, but he did set expectations for what he could control, and that was resources. It's a year-long program at Wake Forest University that takes students out of the classroom and gets them on a campaign trail. Right now, we are at the scene of a smaller demonstration, not as many people, but I want to show you the police presence that is here for this protest alone. I'm going to have AJ Pan along here. This is just a sample of the police officers who are out here securing the scene. They have kept a, you know, a safety distance between protesters and themselves. Definitely a little bit more tense in the air. Can, can you feel a difference today in the air as you walk around downtown? I think Donald Trump's entry was fun. I do, and it's interesting because earlier today we saw one protest that was People were protesting police brutality. They were very loud. They were expressing their views, and the police were keeping a very healthy distance. But then when we showed you that protest uh, not even an hour ago, you could feel the difference. It felt very tense. There were probably maybe less than 10 protesters, but at least, you know, several dozen police officers. You've been listening to Roy Cooper here. What, what, are you, uh, what have you been hearing specifically about his targets uh, against Governor Pat McCrory? Right now, he's been talking a lot about House Bill 2. Obviously, the legislation that was passed early this year to overturn the Charlotte non-discrimination ordinance that has gone from a local issue to a national issue and is something that even presidential candidates have talked about. So obviously, HB 2 is something that doesn't just stay here in North Carolina. It goes beyond and possibly could go beyond to the White House race. Um, but we've also heard the strong message of turning North Carolina blue again. Just a quick history lesson. In 2008, when Barack Obama was first elected in North Carolina, he won just by a little bit, and he was the first Democrat to win since, since 1976. And then in 2012, even though the convention was held right here in Charlotte, he did not win against Mitt Romney. So obviously, North Carolina is purple, and that is the goal. The Democrats want to get people out here to vote in November. The signs speak for themselves. Bernie Sanders supporters say they're fed up with the Democratic Party. Hillary cheated. We know she cheated. The DNC cheated. Uh, Bernie won. Just blocks away from this rally, the Bernie Delegates Network echoed similar frustration. We were given a raw deal that, that uh, we are dealing with a rigged system, that the primary was very much rigged from the very beginning. The California delegation is leading the movement of 1,200 delegates, a group of progressive Democrats who say the recent DNC email leak confirmed what they were thinking for months. We signed up so many new Democrats we got so many people inspired to be Democrats, and now this is the party that we led them to. That is the most disappointing thing that I've ever done. Now the group says they're pushing their progressive agenda, and even though they may not be united as a party right now, these delegates say they are united in the fight against Republicans. We understand that it is essential to defeat Donald Trump and make sure he never gets anywhere near the White House. Back outside in the baking summer heat, that unity isn't the same. We, we, we survived eight years of George Bush. I think we can survive four years of Donald Trump. And the Bernie Delegates Network says they also aren't happy with Hillary Clinton's running mate choice of Virginia Senator Tim Kaine. They say they're working on getting signatures from delegates to challenge this nomination. But who that person could be that they would want as a VP choice, we still don't know yet. The delegates say they're working on that, but we should know more tomorrow. I, th I think most African Americans are probably Republican. They just don't know it yet. Dr. Robin Armstrong says he wasn't looking to change political parties. You know, I just sort of evaluated what I believed. And as I grew and as I got older, I began to think, you know, this party, the Democrat Party, really does not serve my interest. And the Republican Party actually does. He was attracted to the Republican Party for its stance on education, criminal justice reform, and religion. You know, I think that, that, that unfortunately the National Democrat Party and, and, and President Obama have done more for a lot of other communities than they have for the African American community. And I think that's very unfortunate. 20 years later, and Dr. Armstrong is now an RNC committee man for Texas. 
He's also one of four African American RNC members representing the party at a national level. Look this way, Ida. Oh, wait, wait, you gotta do it again. Oh. <laughs> RNC committee woman Dr. Ada Fisher is from North Carolina. She says African Americans helped start and grow the Republican Party, and it's still their party today. As you see with the Black Lives Matter movement, etc., you don't have to tell Republicans that Black Lives Matter. We know that they matter, and we have to take responsibility for our own lives and go out there and make an opportunity for ourselves. But with much of African American identity tied to the Democratic Party, she believes it'll take a change in mindset to make the party more diverse. African Americans are still entrapped in the mentality of the Democratic plantation, that somebody's going to do something for us. Black people in the Republican Party know ain't nobody going to do nothing for us. Now we see photos, videos, GIFs, and now live video happening directly through Twitter. Whether you hate it or love it, social media is a part of our everyday lives, and it's a major part of the 2016 election. We see Periscope as one way that the campaigns have brought people to rallies and to be part of that live experience. In previous elections, campaigns used Twitter to mobilize voters, but now it's a direct link to the presidential candidates. Donald Trump, we know that he's active on Twitter, I and mean, he's changing the discourse of the media hourly, daily, based on what he's saying on Twitter. And what used to be saved for the debate stage is now playing out within 140 characters or less. Political experts say social media could make this year's race even more competitive. I think this is going to be much more interactive and we generally tend have not seen the candidates go at each other like this. Oftentimes it's a lot of staff members who are sending the tweets, but certainly this shows the level of animosity between the two camps and the willingness to say whatever they want to on social media. But Twitter isn't all fun and games. This year, Donald Trump has faced some backlash for his controversial tweets. I think we're already seeing that with the Star of David tweet and those kinds of issues really lends to do we need to be thinking about some kind of filter to make sure that the wrong message isn't being sent when you hit tweet. And during the conventions, Twitter has a team of 20 people who are here and they were in Cleveland too, who are basically tracking and following every digital moment from these conventions. And after every speech, the team can basically put together the best moments, the most tweetable moments, the most talked about moments on Twitter, and they can even figure out which tweet was retweeted the most. From downtown Philadelphia, Kirsten Garris, back to you.